Welcome this week to Kitchen Ambush. We're at a brand new location with a new chef, new product, and one new great dish. We are with Tessa of Tessa's Creation, who is still recovering from this past weekend's victory at Oktoberfest to be the very first Bratmeister champion. Yay. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, you're really recovering good. well? Yeah, you know, festivals are a lot of hard work. You know, I was outside in the sun all day, but I survived. I made it. You did. You survived. You're Survived, survived Oktoberfest yes. in more ways than yes. one. Yes. So that dish you made at Oktoberfest, you were using pendulum fine meats broths they made, and you had the jalapeno cheddar worst. Yes. And you were given the mango tango jam from it all started with a fig. And so tell everybody kind of what you made that wasn't there, so they know what they missed out on. Well, my idea was to make waffles or pancakes or, or something, but you know the generator wasn't working, so. <laughs> That was totally not on purpose. No, yeah, you know, things happen. So luckily I had a saute pan there, so I figured I'd just throw the saute pan, make the pancakes and that on the grill, which didn't work either, wasn't heating up fast enough. So um, I thought, oh, I'll just put an aluminum lid on there. That can be my makeshift ghetto griddle and made some pumpkin pancakes. And what I did was I, you know, cooked the uh, sausage, wrapped the sausage in the pancakes, um, put the uh, the jam on top mm -hmm. and sprinkled some ginger snap crumbs. I mean, that is the new fix for everything, ginger snap crumbs. Yes, it, I it, think so. It totally and fixes everything. Too. And aluminum lids. <laughs> so keep in mind, you're ever in a pinch and you have your grill. Say you lose power, you're out camping, you, you put an aluminum lid on your grill top, you instantaneously have a griddle. Yes. That may or may not work. But we say to try it. No, I think it worked great. It did. Yeah. It came out great. It was, it was a great contrast, good flavors. The pumpkin really came through and actually worked really well with the cheddar and the jalapeno and the brat. And then, of course, the jam was fantastic. Yes, the mango jam was, was absolutely delicious. I think pairing it with the jalapeno sausage was spot on. And it was nice because that jam wasn't too sweet. No, no. And so it still balanced out the heat and everything else, but it just didn't want too sweet. So you're here. You're a local chef, a local caterer. You know, what, what's so important about you local? What's your take on local and why does that mean something to you? Well, I think being a local, uh, it, you're, you're keeping it within the community. You know, I'm not a lord, large corporation. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's very important to uh, spend your money at local businesses. Very, very important. Now, you know, I don't have issues with, you know, big corporation restaurants like Applebee's. And sure. I still go there. Right. But, yeah, it's, I, I think it's very important to keep your money in the area. And I think with local businesses, that's what you do in essence. It is. And what's great, too, is, you know, when you, when you think about a local business, everybody really becomes friends and kind of becomes that community. Yes. And yes. when one needs help, they make a phone call to another local business. And, and now they're working together and they're doing more. I mean, we came out before a couple days before Oktoberfest. We were sitting here around this table talking about the Spetzel and cheese and yes, what we're doing yeah. there. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's great camaraderie. And then the best ideas come from that. And it just really flows. Yeah. And, you know, as, as, as business owners and chefs, you know, we kind of draw ideas from each yep. other. Um, you know, I try and go to as many restaurants, local restaurants, as I possibly can. Um, I could name so many of them. So many great restaurants around here. We are. Um, we're loaded with I, them. Yeah, I don't have enough time <laughs> to go to every single one of them. You just have, like, mark on a calendar. Okay, i got 52 <laughs> weeks in a year divided by the free time I don't have. So speaking of free time you don't have, tell us a little bit about your business. What is, you know, what's your focus? Where, How do you kind of fit in the, the dichotomy of this area? Um, you know, I'm, I guess I'm a bit of a different concept. You know, uh, I'm a caterer as well as doing cakes. I do desserts for some of the restaurants around here. Um, as far as my catering business goes, I'm a full service caterer. I have a full service staff. Um, I even have like some of the rentals, like the glassware, plates. Yep. Um, I, I, I mean, I pretty much can do anything. Um, you know, I, I'm not really good about cutting up a whole steer. What? But you don't want to just slap a big cow right down here and break it down? I don't have a smoker, but, you know, I, I think I do a pretty good brisket in the oven, slow-cooked overnight. Um, I've made sushi before. 
Um, I can do any sort of dessert you want. So yeah, it's it's good for to do all these things because the customer it's like it's it's like one stop shopping. Right. You know, you can get a wedding cake. I can cater your whole wedding. You can rent some of the champagne glasses for your toast. So yeah, I think it's it's convenience. And what's nice is whenever you're here and you're in here working and you're back here preparing for an event or the desserts for another restaurant, you have a case up front where people are coming yes. in buying cheesecakes yes. and cupcakes and sweets. So it's not just the catering side of the house, but you also have a retail side right out front where people can really kind of come in and enjoy those those treats on a one or two person basis or, you know, the one who comes in and says, oh, this is for me and my friends. And what they really mean is I'm going to go sit on my kitchen floor with a fork and eat all of them. <laughs> but you've got that right here yes. for yeah. everybody. Yeah. So. And I love I love having like this open kitchen because a lot of times the customers will come back here you know, while I'm cooking and we get to chat and talk. Yeah, I love my customers, love them. And they do. They're, and then you take part in everything from local charities to yeah. other local businesses, and you use a lot of tools that are made available to you by, you know, people who are supporting local business, all to keep that continuity of the local is so important. Yeah, that's, that's another thing I probably do a little bit differently. I don't advertise a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I like to do something called charitable advertising. Um, I find it has served me well all these years because, um, you know, when you give food or your services to a charity, the people associated with the charity want to give you business back. Yes, and they, they spread do. The, and it's, it's a good way to uh, have people sample your wares, sample your food, mm -hmm. and it's all for a good cause. So and win, that's win, such win, a win, huge win. thing. Yeah, yes. everything. There's so many charities here, and, and especially now in the, in the current climate we're in, there's so many charity op charitable opportunities. and always making sure that they all connect back and so it's a give back and it just keeps giving back to you as well yes yes well that's an awesome way to do things um what's probably one of the craziest things you've had somebody want you to make naughty cakes <laughs> naughty yeah cakes. i've made some very interesting cakes over the year we're gonna go we're gonna leave that at <laughs> naughty cakes that's why i said naughty cakes yes, naughty cakes yes. Yeah, that, okay. Um, yeah, yeah I really that. should have thought about that question before I asked it. You <laughs> no, know? I mean, come on. <laughs> we work in kitchens, right? We work in kitchens. So I said, yep, seen that cake before. Um, now, and then you'll get to things like the other night when you were talking about that, you know, you're getting ready for Oktoberfest, you're slammed full of everything else, and somebody comes in literally at the last minute and is like, I want a birthday cake and I want cupcakes and I need it by tomorrow and nobody else will help me. Will you help me? And what did you do? I said yes because I can't say no. I and what no bucket did you open? Uh, the bucket of Nutella. <laughs> a ginormous bucket of Nutella got open and right saved the day. I see this bucket. Yes. That's a very happy bucket of Nutella. And I also went over to uh, Coelacanth and had a very large beer, too. That was totally to make the cakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we know what we're here. We're going to have a kitchen ambush where it's one local secret ingredient, one chef to make one great dish, and, drum roll, debuted at Oktoberfest the very first ambush box. So inside this box is our surprise. Vanna White? I need like a Vanna White. Oh my gosh, you totally need a girl to come out in a gown. Why have you not done this yet? You know, they tried to get me in a gown <laughs> and I just don't want to make everybody upset at how good I look in a gown. That would be awesome. Just it would, right? for thought next time. Maybe food some Chuck thought. Tees and a gown? Yes. I like it. Well, or see, maybe a kilt even. We're designing fashion on a show like this. Hmm? Lederhosen. Lederhosen. Yeah, see, no, I'm not wearing lederhosen. I'd wear, what's bad is I, I would wear a gown for a lederhosen. I'm not really sure where that would... Well, Darth Vader has a gown. Yes. See, that's the thing. Darth Vader has a gown. People in Star... You know what? Star Jedi's had, like, robish, gowny things. Yeah, so I'm telling it. Well... I think it works. All right, all right so before I get all off on my Star Wars tangent <laughs> that I've been known to do, we're going to have the grand opening of the ambush box. Are, are, you, are you concerned? Are you worried? You, yeah. You've had a long weekend. I, you know, after Saturday, I think I can pretty much you handle, handle anything. anything. Yeah. Especially if I shut your power off, now, your griddles. Well, I mean, if you gave me um, like alligator tail, well, I could probably do alligator tail. No, um, but see, if, on an ambush style, you'd get a live alligator. That's how that would fly. Yeah. And it would like open the box and snap at you. Yeah. No, 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 like live chickens where I have to cut their heads off. Blood flies everywhere. Not good. Into the whole swing thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. All right, so we're going to so, unveil yeah, the good. box. We're going to give you your opportunity to cook. So are you ready? Yes. I'm Lights ready. are going to flash. Special effects enter now. Oh. Prissy pickles. Prissy, 
I thought that was completely That's appropriate awesome. for you. Okay. So we're going to utilize today Prissy Pickles. It's another local company. You find them at a lot of your farmer's markets, and they have a wide variety of flavors for these pickles. And who doesn't like pickles? I have yet to meet somebody that did not like pickles. I've, I've never found a problem. Now, I am, I am more of a dill pickle guy, like the hot pickles, the spicy vinegar-based pickles. So this would be experience because this is a sweet pickle. Okay, it looks like there's all kinds of goodies in there, too. I think there is. And that's what you get when you get a really nice locally made product. You get literally the source material. Okay. So I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to throw a dish together. Okay. What are you thinking? Um, I, you know, when I was out shopping this morning, I'm like, I have no idea what to buy, so I'm just going to kind of pick a little bit of everything and see, what we'll see how it goes. All right, yeah. well, it's on. This all right. is all you. All right, it's on like Donkey Kong. All right. This is my favorite part of getting in a jar, is to watch everybody open the Well, jar. yeah, I learned an old trick. It, it probably messes up your knife, so you've got to use a cheap knife. But if you jam the knife in the lid, it lets the air out and... It's Massacres a, a jar. Yeah. You know, so, so no jars were hurt in the opening of this no, one. No, no. Let's see. Let's see what this guy right, tastes you gotta, like first. What are you thinking? This is a big old pickle bite there. Very first pumpkin. thing in the morning. That is awesome. So you got a good pickle to work mm -hmm. with. Here's a good pickle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we're going into the process. So again. If you haven't watched before, which you have, if you haven't subscribed to Kitchen Ambush on YouTube yet, you should, because then you can watch all these local episodes. But she is going to take this local product, the Prissy Pickle, and it is their Southern Sweet Pickle. She is now challenged with making a dish to feature that and showcase her style. So we have a lot of stuff coming out right now. Oh, I'm so excited. I get to use my mutant blueberries. Mutant blueberries. Those and suckers then, are huge. I, yeah, I don't see spam coming out. I was, I was, there was very, no. there was a big concern. I was going to see spam and Nutella hit the table. I lost with that can of spam pickle. Saturday. Oh, that's such a travesty. <laughs> you were really <laughs> upset about that. I was upset. I, you know, I oh, love I'm spam. Broken. I, 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 I got to tell you, I'm terribly broken up that you lost the spam. All right, so I'm thinking baked salmon in the oven, maybe some relish with the tomatillos blueberries pickles i am a tomatillo fan um and and we're gonna we're gonna go healthy today it's gonna be a salad have a little green yeah i love arugula love it oh i am a so, huge fan of arugula okay. kind of gives you that little peppery bite with some yes. texture yeah actually you know to me that's one of my favorite things to put on a burger is arugula you know instead of the lettuce instead of that things like that i love to put that little peppery arugula on top sounds delish pardon me sir. with goat cheese Mm, I do have goat cheese. Boat, goat cheese on a burger is phenomenal. All right, so what do we have in this lovely container right here? Uh, okay, so that is um, liquid gold from the brats that got cooked. Liquid gold. On Friday. So, so that's the fat, I, I actually, the rendering. I actually went next door to see the camp, got a bunch of beer from them, and cooked the brats and beer. So that's probably like the congealed beer goodness. So it's like fatty beer butter. Yes, yes. Fatty beer butter, new product yes. created right. by right. October. No, no cross contamination. Let's cut our peppers up first. That'd we'll be a good plan. First. So nobody wants a fishy pepper. No. So. All right. So, you know, every you know, chefs have all these weird little quirks about us. You know, my thing is, I've always, I always, when I was cooking in the kitchen, had socks. They were socks. I always had to have crazy sets of socks. Do you have that I crazy had, set of you things? You know, um, back in the day, uh, what was it? It was those. Um, Plastic shoe Birkenstocks. Birkenstocks. Uh, was it uh, Mario Batali had Mario those Batali. orange ugly orange ones? Crocs. Yeah. Yep. He no, loved the orange were Crocs. They, Crocs? they were Crocs. Okay. Yeah. I thought they loved were Birkenstocks. Orange Crocs. Okay. Well, I had a pair of red ones, and I would go out and find the ugliest socks to pair with them. <laughs> you know. See, I always went for I needed character socks. You know, my comic book socks. Star Wars socks. I even have a pair of Yoda socks that the ears flap off the side. Why does that not surprise me? Because the force is strong with those socks. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a nerd. I love it. You know what? I like it. All right, so now you got the red bell pepper cut up. You're heading yeah. over for a bowl. Going to start yeah. mixing. This is going to be that kind of relish topping. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Good sweet red bell pepper. Peppery arugula. The, the sweetness from the, the pickle. 
Well, you know what? I have to get my salmon in the oven, so. That's always a good plan. Yeah, we're we're um we're gonna get this sucker. He's already skinned. And so we'll plate up two because we have to have one for yes. the pictures. Yes. You know, and other uh, people like to eat, so you know we, we had to take that into consideration. Well, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do their food. We're gonna feed everybody too. Uh, no one, no one shall leave my kitchen hungry. Nobody leaves Tessa's hungry. That's for sure. Nobody cries here, and nobody is hungry here. Oh, I'm here, sure some tears ever. have been shed here. <laughs> I do that in secret. You do that in secret. You do that in the walk-in, right? I don't have a walk-in. Well, we, I have a bathroom. Okay. <laughs> it's just a little warmer than a walk-in. Oh, now now you're gonna put the beer brought fat butter right down on the salmon oh, to let yeah. that kind of incorporate into the salmon while yep. it cooks. Yeah, let's throw some salt up in there. All right, some some kosher salt going on top. Yeah. Always with got some, a season. With some flavor. And I am in love with picking chicken I, from Weber. Picking chicken. Yeah, I so love this stuff. So we got salmon. We got brought beer fat butter, and we got picking chicken. Yeah. That is All some right. combination right there. So let's throw this sucker in the oven. So what do you put the oven at right now? What temp? 500. 500 degrees? Yeah, it's a convection oven. Yep. So you got so, the hot air circulating around. Yep. How long do you think that salmon's going to take in that temp? I don't know. When I smell it, it'll be done, probably. See, I like that. When you smell five, it, five it's Five to seven done. minutes, maybe? Right. It's a smell timer. Well, that's how I do cakes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's a smell test. Um, I think the only thing that I generally put on a timer is the cheesecakes and cookies. Kind of have to. Yeah. But for the most part, everything's on a smell timer. Nice. All right, so you've had some wild socks in the past. Do you have something like when you're going to go out to eat and you're looking at a local restaurant, in the, we'll go recently, because if not, we could go all day talking about amazing food we've had. Say in the past few weeks, what's probably one of the best things you've had recently local? Well, yesterday I went to Streets. Um, I had... Good local restaurant. Yeah, I had a pork belly roasted fennel slider, which was amazing. I was going to say, I like where that's going. Yeah. Um, Sliders is kind of that catch thing now. Yeah, That's really yeah. become that kind of catch-all to make great small bite flavors. And it kind of gets people out of their comfort zone by letting them try something different without having to buy this giant, huge sandwich. Yes. So a slider really gets people to experiment more with their food. Yes. And I have to mention the chimichurri fries at Grilled Cheese Bistro. Oh, yeah. With yeah. the shaved Parmesan on shaved top. Shaved Parmesan. Un it's just... freaking believable And they come in this yes. mountain the of mountain. goodness. The mountain. The mountain And I am not a fry person. Typically, I'm not one to just go crazy over French fries. I, I, I just... I haven't been. That's so un-American. Oh, but you know, well, it just means I have more room for everything else I have. <laughs> But those fries, those fries I will eat yes. regularly. Yes. All, and, and have you tried their tomato cream soup? No, I have not had yeah, that that's yet. Delicious I feel like I've, I've been missing something out of my life at this point. Uh, and the truffled mac and cheese sandwich? That I have tried. Okay. I've tried almost all of their sandwiches oh, oh, and no. almost saw the bowl fall. That would have been great. That would have been awesome. It just been, You would have seen peppers fly. It would have been like, so, like Swedish chef style. Uh, you should try putting powdered sugar in a bowl and putting it on high, that's even better. Powdered sugar in a what, in a microwave? No, in, oh, the, in, the, in the mixer. On the, on the mix oh, yeah. yeah. And you're just not thinking clearly, you're tired. You turn it all could be like one of those Power Ranger entrances, like <laughs> when people are gonna come in, you just flip that on behind you and it just yeah. explodes behind you. Medium rare, right? This is you, well, this is you. Well, I mean, some people like medium. Oh no, I want it to see your style. Okay, and now um, you're cutting, so you're cutting up the tomatillos which is one of my favorite things to cook with. And a tomatillo is that, you'll see it at some of your, your markets and that, it, it's like a small green looking tomato that has the leafy cover over it. it the you husk. Know, yeah, the husk, a lot of people look at it and they're like, oh my God, what is that? But it is a phenomenal flavor. What is it you like about tomatillos? Um, it's, it's, it's like a citrusy tartness that yes. a regular tomato just doesn't have. You're going to add a little of the pickle Oop. brine to it. Don't want any pesky um, peppercorns in there. Oh, you don't want to bite down on a big, juicy peppercorn? 
I can't imagine that going, you know, yeah. non-tastily. Well, it's a good thing I don't wear dentures. <laughs> you just <laughs> replace it with a uh, peppercorn. Yeah, I have had some uh, some work on my teeth recently, so, you know, I can't be... Probably wouldn't be a good plan. Eating. All right, so now the pickles are going to be featured inside the relish. They're also, the juice from the pickles is, the brine from the pickles is also what's going to go ahead and, and bring that relish together. Yes, and yeah, then that's, that's gonna what be, I was thinking. So you're going to have the salmon, the pickle relish, and the arugula. And I love the fact that you're using your, you know, your brat, butter, beer concoction to really kind of give fat to the dish. Yes, yes and yes. All right, so let's... So let's, be, let that be a lesson. Never throw away good fat. It can always be used later. Well, I'm sure the liposuction people would probably disagree. Never go away edible fat. <laughs> I, I keep thinking of Fight Club now. You can make soap, right? <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be wonderful. Just lather up with some brat fat. There you go. There's a whole other use. But it, it, it is fun to have that fat laying around because you go to cook a dish, you don't have a lot of time to impart new flavors and cook something down and, and really, you know, liven up a dish. You can just use, you know, leftover fat, bacon fat and duck fat. Mm, dog Love duck fat. fat. Cracklins. Cracklins. Yeah, duck fat is another Duck fat is wonderful. just, it's gold. That's mm, just the best yes, stuff in yes, the world. Yes. Cook everything with duck fat. Yes, green beans. It almost doesn't matter. You add duck fat to it, it's delicious. Duck Brussels fat fries. Sprouts, fries. Oh, yeah, Brussels sprouts. That's a good one. Yeah. I mean, literally, look at these suckers. This is not normal. I'm partly afraid of what that is. But I tried one. They're really good. She says that now. We'll see her in 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so you had, you had a good time at Oktoberfest. I did. I did. The, the Star Wars people were across from me. Yes. Um... The 501st uh, the, Garrison Tyrannus, hilarious. They had the Sand Trooper with Lederhosen on. That poor guy was just shriveled by the yeah. end of the day. They were in these suits. Like it was three amazing. Pounds. Yeah, it was. It was. A, it was a bit warm. And then day. they had the little kids dressed like Jawas. I. You know what? I didn't see those. I was. I had my head down in the brats at that point. Well, in true kid fashion, they were dressed up like little Jawas running around and had about a five-minute attention span. They're like, okay, we're done. We're done with being in a chow outfit. All right. All right. So the nose tell you a little They're more. getting there. All right. All right. So all right. relishes come together. Yes. You got all the components of the relish you want. Um. Well, I, I need to do a little uh, tasting. Oh, a little tasting. Yeah, Always taste my, your food. Yeah. It's very important. Especially when you're using a mutant product. So how many aprons do you own? Well, a friend of mine made these for me. She quilts. Um, I probably have like about three or four of them. Nice. They make me feel kind of girly, you know. It's Anything? always important to feel girly. Well, is a, is I mean, a lady I'm in, a in the kitchen? Full of girls. And as a lady in the kitchen, you know, sometimes you feel dirty and gross, and you just need a girly pretty apron, apron yeah. to make you feel better. Well, so. we talked. You know, you made the comment when I first came in that I had glitter on me. I, I'm pretty sure there's not a day that goes the by that I don't of the craft have world. glitter. Right. I really try never to think about it that way. Mm. <laughs> Between the twins and the wife, I, I'm, there's glitter everywhere. Some Thai ketchup. Oh, so now you're going to hit in touch. some sriracha. All right. Um, Bring a little heat to the sweet. Yeah, some Thai ketchup. See, this is what you do. When you're in the kitchen, stop worrying about, you know, hey, it says use this and use this and use this. If you have something that's a flavor you like, try it. It's not going to hurt. I probably double dipped there, but it's all right. You doubled it? I think so. See, now that's how this works. You just experiment, you try things, you enjoy food. And it's always better to have somebody else in the kitchen with you, because then it's just fun. Because then yeah, if you really maybe. messed up or something, you're like, oh, it was good, try this. This tastes horrible. Here, try this. Yes. Or, or my favorite is, this smells awful. Here, smell this. <laughs> You already preempt them that it's going to be so bad. I already know it but smells then you still, bad, but, but I, you still I need, want them to go ahead. Yeah. You have you to have need somebody confirmation. else share that pain. Yes. You need confirmation that it smells bad. It's not. So. And I think we need some more. And you can. You really smell the pickles. 
Oh, dang. You know, there's not a lot of jar. A lot of times you'll open up a jar of pickles, you really don't smell much. It's, it's, these, it's these very These are truly clear. delicious pickles. Yeah, they've got great color. All right, some more blueberries in. Yeah, we'll throw some more blueberries in. Yeah, it's arugula. And I think that's salmon. So what else is coming up in the next couple of weeks you got going on? Um, just a lot of catering gigs. Um, you know, of course, the, the cakes. Uh, I started doing desserts for Legend Brewing with, that just opened up in uh, Portsmouth, right where the ferry lots off. And you're using their beer to make the cakes, right? Yes. Their beer is delicious. So you're using a local product to make another local product to be served at a local business. Yes, yes and, and You yes. can't go wrong. That's the entire tri-pack. It's that perfect cycle of life. I yeah, feel and, a, um, a Lion King moment. I don't want to cry. <laughs> No, but it's really cool because they just, they don't tell me really what to make. They're just like, we trust your judgment. You just go on and make whatever you want. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you get to just, you know, make some new cakes with them, use their beer. And then that gives them an ability to sell a local product yes. to their people. And then it's across the, it's on the peninsula side. So now you're bringing a product from the peninsula over here and you're taking a product from here over to the peninsula. Yes. Perfect. Wait, wait. they're over in Portsmouth. That's across from here. I'm still trying to... <laughs> it's early for her right now. No, it's Saturday. She Saturday. said Saturday. You need at least a week to recover from a festival. <laughs> to regrow the brain cells. Toll. We were literally sitting around the other day talking about filming, you know, actually doing a, a filming of a caterer or a food truck getting ready for a festival. Like when the sun comes up and what starts and how many things happen before the first plate goes out that that would just be something really hilarious to watch. Well, it'd be an eye opener for some people. An eye closer for others. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. Well, you know, this job is hard work. You have to really love what you, you do. You do have to love what you do. You have do. to love this job. Because then you're putting yourself into it. You're putting yourself out yes. there. And it's not just whether people like the food or not. It really becomes connected to back to us about whether they like us. That is so true. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts from Kitchen Ambush. Yeah. Should start doing like a uh, what is the the SNL guy um, the hand what is his name Deep Thoughts from I have no mean? idea. At this point, they all kind of blur together. Yeah, they pretty much do. All right, let's put let's this stuff up. Let's do it. Let's put up. it up. Light it up. More deep thoughts to come later. All right, so let's move our salmon. All right. We got some yummy organic arugula. Arugula. Now, I just, I have to uh, throw something out there. I usually get my produce and good stuff from Westside, but Sunday, I was, I was off the clock. <laughs> you were they, checked out And they usually, Sunday. I mean, they have an amazing... They do have a great spread. And they're the only farmer's market in Norfolk now. And it's its the own only store. One. You can go there all the time. Yes. It's right over off Collie yes. Avenue. Yes. And they carry a lot of the local products we use on the show. Oh, I did not know that. They do, yeah. But yes, West Side Produce. All so right. let's see what you're thinking. Sorry, right. so arugula down first on the base. Yes. Now, I don't, I mean, I like dips, I like sauces, but I like things to be sort of plain. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to put it, I'm not going to dress the arugula. Right, you want, the, you want to let the flavor let the, of the product do its thing. Yeah. The stuff from the, the flavor of the salmon and the flavor from the relish. Well, especially by using the brine from the pickle juice, kind of get your own little like vinaigrette-esque yes, yes. flavor to the dressing anyways. And since I down buckets of Nutella all the time, I'm not trying to be 300 pounds. So. Nutella is a tasty thing. It's, it's, oh. yes. All right, so salmon going on top. Our salmon. Nice little bed of arugula. Uh, we need a, we need some forks and some knives. Bring over the relish. All right, finishing beauty right on top there. Some that juice. adds color because you've got the red and you've got the blueberries. That's very pretty. I think that's, that's a pretty. pretty plate. Yeah. All right, Mister. I get to do the honors. Oh, we gotta do this together. Okay. So, this is a group effort. All right. How are we going into this? Just get yourself a little piece of salmon. Get some of the blueberry, yep. the pickle. Where's that pickle at? There it is. Yeah. There we got pickle, we got blueberry, we got salmon, we got 
the arugula, all that delicious brine. Mm, not bad. What I like about mm. it is you still have the distinct flavors between everything and the relish. Like you get the crunch from the bell pepper, the sweetness, mm -hmm. but that brine really kind of permeated it. And then even the longer this sits, it'll really kind of push through all of that even more. But that came out great. Well, thanks. And I, you know what's funny is I was, I was laughing with them. I'm not a huge sweet or bread and butter pickle fan, but this really works. Well, that's not your average sweet pickle, we think. No. Mm -mm. There's all kinds of goodies in there. There really is. And that's what brine. you want to see when you get a good local pickle, because mm -hmm. you see all the stuff that went into oh, that pickle. All the good stuff. Yeah, it's all in Sinks there. Sinks down to the bottom. And then you save the, you know, if you pull the pickles out, use the pickles. That makes a great brine for chicken. Pickle juice brines for chicken. Isn't that totally the uh, secret ingredient at uh, Chick-fil-A? That's the, the secret thing. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say Jesus juice, but it's <laughs> pickle It's pickle juice. juice. Well, but, I mean, they yeah. are a religious organization. And they do. They brine the chicken in pickle juice, and that's why the pickle on top works so great. <laughs> But right here, it literally brought the relish together. Well, I'm going to say that this has been a successful ambush. I think so. I think you made some great food. We are continuing to show up at local restaurants to see local chefs like Tessa with a local product like Prissy Pickles. And next week, we'll be at another restaurant. But if you haven't caught up to where we are right now, you go to YouTube and search Kitchen Ambush, and you can see all of our episodes back to the very first one. And now we have a new veteran of Kitchen Ambush, that is Tessa, who is also the 2017 Oktoberfest Bratmeister champion. What? So find <laughs> Tessa's creations on Facebook, Instagram. like her, Instagram, mm -hmm. like them, follow, come by here and try some great local food, and then look us up, Kitchen Ambush, on everything, Facebook, Instagram, but most importantly, subscribe to that channel so you can see more great local food and products. Next week will be in another place. We'll be coming up live to you at a couple more events here very, very soon. And there's some surprise things that are going to be happening. But this has been a great day. The food was phenomenal. We'll see you next week. Don't have too much fun unless you tell me about it because then I want to come too. Tessa will come too. She'll bring cake. And beer, maybe. Cake and beer. And Nutella. And Nutella. <laughs> Bye, guys.